सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी जस्ट डू अ वेरी ब्रीफ रिकैप ऑफ व्हाट वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट येस्टरडे इन टर्म्स ऑफ द कंटेंट ऑफ यूएचबी थ्री सम ऑफ दिस लाइक आई सेड येस्टरडे आल्सो मे सीम अ लिटिल रेपिटेटिव बट देर विल बी न्यू कंटेंट आल्सो एंड जस्ट so that we have the base we are all starting on the same page we are going through this um little bit of uh repetition so right this uh, uhv3 we are talking about understanding human being nature and existence so you will feel like we did that already but um uh, we'll be going into it in a little more depth now so what are we what is the goal of this course first thing we are exploring the human being the human reality so when we say human being you can see that between the self and the body more important to us is the self we mentioned in the last uh, in uhb2 the fdp or the previous uhb workshop that you may have attended that um the self is the one that is important for us and the self is doing things outside with the help of the body so the body is really being used like a tool or an instrument now in the self what is significant for us is what we aspire for what we wish for what we want and how to fulfill it so we'll be able to see in this course hopefully that self is the one that is central to our existence as a human being another thing that we will be looking at is when we talk of nature and existence what is the pattern of this nature and existence we we'll, we will be able to see hopefully that the pattern in nature and existence is one of coexistence so everything in existence you will find you know when we look at it through you know with the right perspective we'll be able to see that coexistence is at the heart of everything in this existence and this coexistence is the one that we are seeing in nature and existence as a very natural unfolding a natural expression so there is a whole lot of variety that you see in nature and existence and at the base you can see that there is something binding there is something that is connecting in all the units and how these units seem to be fulfilling each other there is a mutual fulfillment there is a coexistence between all of these units so we said one of the goals is to be able to understand the human being and to be able to see that the self is the one that is central to my existence as a human being the body is a more like a tool it is important but when it comes to you know discussing about the self and the body the self is the one that is central to me and we said when we look at nature and existence we will see that just as the self is central to me as a human being coexistence is central to all of existence and it is being reflected or it is being expressed 
in a variety of ways through all the varied units that we see in nature. And we'll go into that a little more deeply. Then the third thing that we are going to be uh, trying to get through this course is to understand what is my role when we say that as a human being, what is significant for me is the self. In nature and existence, what is there as a pattern is the coexistence. Then I also need to be able to see what is my role as a human being in this existence. So the coexistence is already there in existence. All I have to do is to study it, to understand it. With that understanding, to have the feeling within me and the thought within me of coexistence for every other unit. And then to live in coexistence in mutual relationship with every other unit, with every other human being, with all of the nature. So these are the three goals. One is to understand the human being, the reality of the human being, and to you know uh, study the self in more detail. The other is to study nature and existence in more detail, and to see this pattern of coexistence in all of existence. And the third thing is to see what is my role, my participation. What do I need to do in this existence? I don't have to do anything for the existence. I just have to understand it, have that feeling and thought of coexistence, and live in coexistence with every other unit. Yes, please, we can go forward. So, you are familiar with the pattern of uh, the process of UHB, how we go through the method, and we'll be following the same thing here, that we'll be exploring. These will be put forward as proposals. Please don't believe it to be true, but at the same time, don't disbelieve it also. Try to explore it within yourself and see whether it is something that is universal, something that seems right to you. So we won't be giving any do's and don'ts. It won't be that this is how it is and that's it. We'll be putting a proposal, you have to explore. You have to investigate into the proposal, you have to explore the proposal within you, you have to try to see it within yourself. In, we discussed this very briefly yesterday also, and we, like I said, go into it in a little more today. So this course has been designed as five modules. In module one, we're talking about the human being, basically just what we aspire for, you know, that we are aspiring for happiness in continuity with all of the you know, um, desires that we have. We, you know, before UHV or earlier, before we started exploring within, we may have thought we have many, many desires. But now we may be able to see that Behind all these desires, at the root, there is one basic human aspiration that is common for all of us. That we want to be happy and we want to be happy in continuity. So we'll talk about that and how we fulfill that, how we can fulfill that aspiration. What is the... Um, solution that is all encompassing, a sort of resolution to this whole issue. 
So we'll talk about that in module one. In module two, we will focus on right understanding in the self, what we call knowing. We'll talk about who is the knower. I, the self, is the one who wants to know what is to be known. This whole everything around me. Of course, I want to know everything. You see a child, how curiously they ask, why, why, why? So many questions. The adults get tired of answering their questions because every human being wants to know and wants to know everything there is to know. And what is the process of knowing? So like I said, self-exploration. So we'll be looking at all of this, how to go about it in some detail. In module three, we will be understanding the human being. Now you may feel again, we have already talked about this in UHV2. So in UHV2, we talked more about the differences between these two realities that make up the human being, the consciousness unit and the material unit. And the, you know, the, the different needs of the consciousness and the material, the different activities of the consciousness and the material. So basically an overview or an outline of the differences between the consciousness and the material. Here, we'll be focusing a little more on the activities within the cell. And not just the lower activities, but also the higher activities. So that will be some added material that will be there in this module. Then in module four, we'll be understanding nature and existence in more detail. How everything is interlinked. What is the pattern? And you know, how we can identify this at every level. We can see uh, coexistence in each of these levels in nature, the orders that we talk of and how it is all interconnected. In module five, we will look at our role, our participation, our conduct. What is the all encompassing resolution and how we can be living holistically and using this practically in our day-to-day -day life with the feeling and thought of coexistence and with, we hope to be, you know, to be able to see that this pattern that we can bring in in our conduct leads to more and more happiness, till more and more moments of happiness, till we can get to the continuity of happiness. Um, welcome to this course. In UHV3, Understanding Human Being, Nature and Existence Comprehensively, we are looking at Lecture 1. Again, this is an overview. In Lecture 1, we are having an overview of this whole course and what we are going to be talking about. Again, we discussed this briefly, but we'll go through it one more time. So the objective of the course, I can see that today students also may not have a whole lot of clarity about their purpose in life. We can see even we were busy with looking at fulfilling desires from outside. So students also, you will find, are not having this clarity about what exactly they are aspiring for, what kind of goals they want to pursue, what is their purpose in life. So hopefully with the help of a course like this, 
the students can have more clarity about these issues. Then secondly, today we look at nature and all of existence as something separate from the human being, as some, something that is there that can be dominated over by the human being or that we can try to control in various ways we try to do that. But have we really understood nature and existence, the reality, the way it is? Or are we looking at it through our own beliefs, our own preconditionings, our own filters? So once we understand, once we see this coexistence, the harmony that is there already in nature and existence, then we'll also be able to see our role, our participation. What do we need to do to be in line with this pattern in existence? So to be able to see our interconnectedness with nature, that we are not separate and isolated from the nature. If we try to you know, do things in nature, there is no way it is not going to impact us also. So to be able to understand this whole harmony in existence. And the third thing is to help the students develop understanding about human tradition and the various components of the human tradition. Again, in tradition, you see the role of the human being, the participation. So today, we may not understand many things that were being done in tradition from before, the reasons why they were brought up or the significance of those. Because today, with the advent of science and technology, that has taken, you know, is in the forefront and many other things that may have been good in our past are either forgotten or they are, um, sort of being overlooked. And slowly now, more and more, uh, we are trying to become aware of you know, all that was being done, that was passed down as tradition in human beings. And what is the significance of that? So we will look at that. So if you look at the methodology of the course, how we are going to do it, like we discussed just now, we are going to be trying to explore this. So only the proposals will be put before us and we will try to explore these proposals within us, see if they are universally acceptable to us. And what are we exploring? Like we said, we are exploring the human being and its role and how it is interconnected with the rest of the existence. So there won't be any do's and don'ts. That you, you know, this is what you have to believe. This is how it is. This is what you should not do or should do. Rather, you need to look at the proposal within yourself investigate it, explore it, and whatever you found, whatever you could see makes sense, even though we may not see it fully as truth or reality, but whatever you can see uh, for now, We'll try to see if we can, at least it looks desirable. It looks like we verify from with our natural acceptance and we see that it makes sense or it is something that we would be interested in. And then once we can verify and see that it is significant, it is something worth doing, then we can try to have that feeling and thought of coexistence and try to bring it in our life, in living. And that's when we have the experiential validation. Once we 
bring it in our living, we live with that feeling and thought, then it is now in our experience. So we can experience the calm, the comfort, the happiness with that, and then it becomes validated for us. So that is the process we are going to try to uh, use. So as we had mentioned before with UHV2, this is going to be in the form of a dialogue. So I'm just facilitating this whole process. I'm also exploring like everybody else here. And our goal is to help each other in the exploration so that we can all advance in our self-development. So I will be helping to put forward the proposals and then we will all be trying to explore them within us, investigate them within us. And then if we find them to be right, try to live with those proposals and see if we can validate it for ourselves experientially. Because only when we validate it experientially can we say, yes, this is right for me. I have, I know it. Before that, it is only information. So we'll keep doing this and this will help us in evolving for all of us. This will also help us to see that we have so many beliefs, so many preconditionings, which we may never have questioned. Somebody told us something in school. Somebody told us something when we were growing up. We read something, we saw something in the media. We may not have questioned whether it is really right or it is just somebody's you know, idea about the reality. Is it really true? Is that how it is? So we may not have questioned these things. And now we'll be able to see all of that. Because when we look at proposals with an open view, putting aside our preconditionings and checking with our own natural acceptance, we may be surprised that many of our answers uh, that we get from the natural acceptance are very different from what we had initially believed or what we had thought was right for us. So if you look at the process for right understanding, the process of self-exploration, this is not something new. This is something that is, um, we have been through in the previous workshops. Whatever we are going to be saying is going to be in the form of proposals. When we give the proposal, don't assume it to be true. But at the same time, don't condemn it as false either. A lot of times what we do is when a proposal comes forward, we try to match it with our preconditioning, whatever we believe. And we, if it fits with our belief, we say, okay, this is good. If it doesn't fit with our belief, we say, no, no, reject. So if we do that, then the process of exploration will not happen within us. The process of exploration demands that we keep the proposal open without either just taking it up or condemning it outright. So neither assume it to be true nor assume it to be false. You have to verify it on your own right. How do you verify? So the proposal is put before you. You verify on the basis of your natural acceptance. So like we keep asking this question in the UHV workshop. You know, what is naturally acceptable to you? feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? It's a very simple question. We keep asking it. And if you check with your natural acceptance, you get that answer outright very quickly, right? Are you able to get that answer in yourself? 
So between relationship and opposition, what is naturally acceptable to me? Between relationship and opposition, the feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition. So it's very clear, we can see from all the you know, answers in the chat, this process of verification is very easy. We can all do it. It has been tried and tested even in small children. And in people from all walks of life, education doesn't have anything to do with it. Because this faculty of natural acceptance is there in each and every one of us. Whether we are small, whether we are an adult, whether we are the elderly, those are changes in the body. At the level of the self, we all have this natural acceptance. Even in the more evolved self, even in the less evolved self. Proposals, as we keep verifying the proposals, we get more and more in touch with our natural acceptance. And we keep referring to it again and again. And therefore, we bring about the change in our conduct also, as we will see. So one is to verify. Then the second part of this exploration, self-exploration, is the experiential validation like we were talking, living according to. So what do we mean by living according to? We mentioned having the feeling and the thought of coexistence. So when you have the feeling and the thought of coexistence, whoever, whomsoever you interact with, you are going to be having, you are going to be interacting with the other unit with that feeling and thought of coexistence. Whether that unit be a unit from the human order or whether that unit be a unit from nature. When we say that we live according to it, now if we are in our living, if we are interacting with human beings, which we do all the time, then once we um, you know, interact with another human being, if we live according to this, what we have verified, so just now we asked that question, what is naturally acceptable to us, feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? Now, when I interact with another human being, it could be somebody in my family, it could be somebody on the street, it could be somebody I work with, it could be a relative, a friend, or just anyone that I don't know also. When I interact with that other human being, if I interact with the feeling of relationship, at the moment that I interact with the feeling of relationship, I can experience that I feel happy. And when I express this feeling of relationship to the other, I may be able to see that the other also feels happy. So there, at that very moment, I can see that when I live according to what I had verified through my natural acceptance, when I'm able to see that when I interact with the feeling of relationship, I feel happy and the other feels happy when I'm sharing that with him or her, then I can see that this is leading to mutual happiness. Now, that proposal has been experientially validated for me. Similarly, when I interact with nature, when I have to work with nature, I will try to see what do I want to do? What is naturally acceptable to me? To, you know, help enrich the nature or to destroy the nature or to spoil the nature. So you'll be able to see that what is naturally acceptable to us is to enrich the nature. 
help it to prosper right can we see that for ourselves that we also want to enrich the nature we also want to see prosperity in nature now so when we work with nature we find that nature provides so much abundance isn't it you grow you put one seed in the soil a plant grows and it becomes a tree and it gives so much fruit how much work did we do we may have put little water in the soil maybe some manure but there is so much abundance in nature so i can see that there is prosperity in it for me but at the same time i can also see that when i work with nature uh, you know by referring to my natural acceptance and i try to enrich the nature then there is prosperity in nature also i am not destroying that nature but rather i am enriching it so now this proposal also gets experientially validated that there can be mutual prosperity when i live according to this proposal so now when i have experientially validated this now it has become right understanding for me so what process is naturally acceptable to you a process of exploration verification understanding in yourself or you would rather just you know assume that whatever is said is true and not verify you want to verify what it you know be preferable for you to verify or just to accept whatever of course we want to verify we all want to be able to choose to find out for ourselves make that choice for ourselves so that is what we will be doing in this course so in module 1 you can go to the next one. yeah in module 1 we said we are just introducing about the human being and the aspirations of the human being so what exactly do we aspire for when we look at continuous happiness also how do we go about this achieving this continuous happiness how do we fulfill it and we already talked about this even in the earlier levels of the uhp workshop that our basic aspiration for happiness the aspiration is in the self the fulfillment is also in the self it is not there outside so the fulfillment of my aspiration is through right understanding this right understanding is something that i have to have within myself this is when i you know as i explore the activities within the self i find as i am unfolding or becoming aware of the higher activities within the self that i am able to understand more and more and ultimately all the way up to realization the highest activity in the self when i reach i will have completeness of right understanding and the all encompassing resolution for everything so we we'll look at this in some depth and we will also look at the fact that between the self and the body the self is the one that is important the one that is central to my existence and how we can solve all our problems whatever we may have thought as a variety of problems with this single you know all encompassing resolution how it can throw light or give clarity on so many other issues in life that practically it can be used um for being 
calm, comfortable, and happy, which is what we want. In module two, we will be looking at right understanding, knowing. So we will look at who is the knower, what is to be known, and what is the process. So for that, who is the knower? I am the knower. I means when I look at myself as a human being, the knower, the experiencer, the doer, that is the self. And the body is just used as a tool to express whatever is, uh, you know, whatever, whatever feeling and thought I have in the self, that when I express it outside, for the expression outside, I take the help of the body. So the actual doer is myself. Now, when we talk of what is to be known, so we have to understand what, know what, all of nature and existence, how things are interconnected, how, you know, this pattern of coexistence is there in all of existence. And to be able to see what is my role. As a human being, I am there. All the units are there embedded in this coexistence. It is already there. We don't have to make effort to make this coexistence happen. It's already there. I just have to understand it and try to live according to it. So I can have human conduct in accordance with that. Yes. Then in module three, so shall we take a couple of questions are there? Um, okay, let me just finish this and then we'll take the questions. In module three, we are trying to understand the human being. So like I said, in the previous courses, we have been looking at the human being, you know, in light of this human being being a coexistence of self and body and the self having different needs, different characteristics, different activities, body having different needs, different characteristics, different activities. One is the consciousness, the self is the consciousness unit. And the body is a material unit. Then we'll also look at what is significant in the human being, the self, and the activities that are there in the self. The activities that I am aware of, that I am awakened to, and also the activities that I may not be awakened to yet, but I have the potential to awaken to. We'll also look at how we have harmony or contradiction within ourselves. What is the basis for that? In module four, we will be understanding nature and existence. So this we'll be understanding in detail. How will we understand? If you look at nature outside, it seems like too vast to explore, to understand. So it's not through the gross eyes that we have to try to understand everything. What we are going to do is, we are going to go through this process of self-exploration, self-awareness, self-evaluation. We are going to slowly keep awakening to the higher activities of the self. And with that, we will be able to see the relationship between us and other units, us as human beings and other units. We will also be able to see, or we hope to be able to see the harmony in all the units in nature and existence. And ultimately, we want to be able to realize this coexistence that is there already. And how to participate 
in this coexistence, in this harmony, in this order that is already there. So all of this, when we understand nature and existence, we will talk about that. And finally, in module five, we can go to the next thing. Yeah. We will be trying to understand human conduct, the all-encompassing resolution, how to live holistically in a way that we are in accordance with the pattern in existence, the pattern of coexistence. So we'll talk of what is uh, included in this, what we are referring to as the all-encompassing resolution. We'll talk about understanding, about wisdom, about science, and so on. We'll get into that, you know, as we go into the modules, we'll talk more in depth about that. So we'll you know, have um, more detail as we go along. And um, we will be looking at resolution, not just within or not just outside, but through the entire span. That means within the self, in the higher activity, once we have the realization, once we can see the pattern, the way it is, then our feeling and thought can be aligned to that. You know, the lower activities in the self can get aligned to these higher activities. And with that, when we interact outside in our behavior and work, then we are able to participate with every other unit with harmony. So there is harmony within myself and I'm also able to participate in the harmony in nature and all of existence. So this is what we are going to be doing in the days to come, in the next three months. There are some references that we have mentioned and uh, that is just for your own uh, reference if you are interested in knowing more than what is being discussed in the course then there are various references that you can look at there are three objectives and two especially the competence level of a human being um, i mean students second yeah. second and third mm -hmm. if you could uh, explore with a little uh, no example uh, you'll be understanding a little deeper madam otherwise yeah. it seems both are uh, almost similar objective two and three yeah yes so when we talk of you know competence to understand the harmony and to participate we are talking about living that isn't it for the student not just to try to understand it but also to try to live it yeah, yeah. in the third thing we are talking about you know all that has been there you know this is not something new this is not something that we have discovered only now and we are bringing it up from age on you know people have been exploring this and people have been looking at ways of getting to the truth and mm -hmm. how to go about living with that truth so there are many things in tradition how is tradition born you know is it that this this is something that we we are able to understand now and it dies with us no 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 is there no. the heritage yeah so that we is. have to be able to see what is there has come to us as human tradition and how we can further bring it into tradition further so we yes. also have a role in um and having and it developing. go further Madam, could you please uh, repeat and uh, made me more clear regarding uh, the process of uh, experiential uh, validation regarding uh, the behavior with human beings and uh, regarding with uh, uh, the work with the rest of the nature? Yeah. So when we say that, you know, we have, we are verified on the basis of our natural acceptance that the feeling of relationship is naturally acceptable. Feeling of opposition is not naturally acceptable. Now, this is there 
as information within me. I verified it. It is there within me. But now when I go to the office, uh, the PN or the janitor or somebody is not doing their job properly. Okay. I look at that. Mm. How am I going to interact with them? Mm. With the feeling of relationship or with the feeling of opposition? I verified it. But in my living, is it there or not? If I am not living it, if I continue to shout at that person with the feeling of opposition, mm. then I have validated anything in my experience. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it means I am not uh, living in it. But I am trying to solve it. So that is not acceptable. So I have to live it. If and only if I live in it, then I can uh, comfortably uh, understand the natural acceptance and continue the relation. Yes, madam. See, yes. the natural acceptance is already there. Is there. Right? We yes, just have to refer to it. When we refer to it, we get, you know, what is right for me, I am able to see that. Mm -hmm. But until and unless I live it, I don't have it in my experience. So it so, doesn't make any difference to me as such in my life. I look at this as a philosophy, very nice to read and, and all that. I am still unhappy, isn't it? I'm still unhappy myself and I'm making others unhappy. So I haven't experientially validated anything. So uh, if I verify with the natural acceptance, then I can be very friendly with him and uh, I may not be in enmity with him. Okay, I know. However, out of my lack of energy level, I may not uh, uh, practically uh, behave in the right manner. So, how to increase my energy only with the uh, knowing is it sufficient or uh, shall I have to increase my energy level to uh, maintain the uh, relation? Because many a times practically we see that problem. We know how to behave, but we are unable to uh, behave in practically, I am telling madam. Yeah. So, uh, so, so where is the lacking? Where is the gap? So, is yeah. it the lack of energy level or lack of practice? I won't say energy level because you can see that you know the same time that you had shouted and all. Yes. Now, if you go home and something very pleasant happens, you may have a change in mood. Now, hmm. where did the energy come from? So, I won't say it's an energy problem. Problem is that I am not really, you know, um, paying attention to my, what I had verified. Hmm. Verification happened in me. But hmm. then when I went to interact with this person, again, I am hmm. looking outside. And when the other person shouts or doesn't do the work, I'm getting irritated. And I think that it happened because the other fellow didn't do the work. I mean, can you elaborate more on the resolution term? Because we, in UHV, we have a different uh, meaning uh, we have associated with the terms. So, what is expected here when we state that the resolution or all-encompassing resolution? Yeah, basically, when we look at problems, we try to look at solution for that one problem. Supposing um, somebody is misbehaving, and mm. I have decided that my solution to this problem is take that boy out of class, the disturbance. Now, this could be a solution to that problem that disturbance is being created in the class. Right? But if mm. I look at the all encompassing, yeah. uh, if I look at it with the view that I am interconnected with everybody the children who were behaving properly but also with the child who misbehaved out of the class now that child is not uh, able to access whatever i am teaching to the class so somewhere it is not uh, mm -hmm. it is not just behavior towards that child so do i have justice in all my relationships so I'll be looking at things more holistically. Something which can solve the problem on a level where uh, it resolves things for, it takes care of every unit. 
और इट इज केयर ऑफ एवरी ऑर्डर इट्स नॉट जस्ट आइसोलेटेड लाइक राइट नाउ वेन वी लुक एट प्रॉब्लम वी ट्राई टू फाइंड अ स्मॉल सोल्यूशन बट इट दिस मे लीड टू अ बिगर प्रॉब्लम समवेर एल्स लाइक द चाइल्ड आई थ्रू आउट ऑफ द क्लास माई क्लास बिकेम क्वाइट डिस्टर्बेंस प्रॉब्लम इज गॉन बट हैज द प्रॉब्लम रियली गॉन बिकॉज दैट चाइल्ड हु इज आउटसाइड somewhere was not trying to create problem but either he didn't understand or you know lack of competence or whatever the reason is why he was uh, creating noise or whatever i have not taken care of that that will show up as a bigger problem somewhere else isn't it 